triggered at some unpredictable point. He held the watch to his ear and confirmed that it was ticking. Perhaps the secret mechanism would be triggered at some unpredictable point during the unwinding. And so Reuben stared at the watch in his hand, waiting. A minute passed, then two. He found himself growing more and more excited. He couldn't tear his eyes away. He hated even to blink for fear he'd miss something, and he began to feel jittery and hot. The purpose of a jack-in-the-box, after all, is to fill you with mounting anticipation, the tension increasing second by second as you wait for that startling moment when the hidden figure pops up. And Reuben was waiting for something far more dramatic than a little clown puppet. By the time ten minutes had passed, the tension had grown almost unbearable. After fifteen, he felt ready to collapse. And indeed, when the watch stopped ticking, he sank back onto the bed with an exhausted and disappointed sigh. Ten more positions to try. What if nothing happened until the last attempt? He would have to endure over two hours of nerve-wracking waiting. And of course, it was possible that nothing would happen at all. Reuben didn't choose to believe that, however. He turned his head toward the wooden box sitting open on the bed. He gazed at the inscription inside the lid. Hey, Mr. Light, he mumbled. What's the secret? For he felt sure now that P. William Light had known it, whatever it was. But if the man's ghost was hanging around the watch, it certainly wasn't whispering any hints to Reuben. He was going to have to do this the hard way. He rolled onto his belly, set the watch to three o'clock, and tried again. Again, nothing happened. Fifteen minutes of pointless ticking, that was it. Reuben groaned and pressed his face into the mattress. By the time he'd tested all the positions through eleven o'clock, Reuben's eyes were bleary from staring, his entire body ached from the tension, and his hand was cramped from squeezing the watch too tightly. He hated to stop with only one position left to try, but he desperately needed a break. Returning the watch and key to their box, Reuben flopped over onto his back. Despite the mounting disappointments, he still felt strangely confident that he was right about the watch's secret, and he wondered what might be hidden inside it. He closed his eyes and imagined a tiny velvet pouch stuffed with diamonds. Or rubies. Something small but precious. Something he could sell. His dream of riches wasn't over, he thought. Not by a long shot. He woke to the sound of someone at the apartment door. A muffled thump, the scrape of a key. Reuben sat up with a gasp. He hadn't meant to fall asleep. What time was it? How long had he slept? His eyes shot to the alarm clock. Almost six. But it couldn't be his mom at the door. She had to work that evening. And yet, there was no mistaking the familiar squeak of the lock turning. Reuben leaped up, snatched the wooden box, and shoved it under his bed. He was groggy, disoriented, wondering if he should hide. He was still trying to decide, watching with dread through his bedroom doorway, when the apartment door swung open. Hey, kid, guess who's home? called a familiar voice, and Reuben almost collapsed with relief. His mom stepped in, closing the door with her foot. She had her purse slung over one shoulder, a larger handbag with her change of clothes in it over the other, and grocery sacks in both hands. She turned and saw him gaping at her. Oh, hey, change of plans. I'm off tonight. She cocked her head to the side. Reuben? Are you okay? Hello? Reuben snapped, too, and rushed to help her. Her forehead was beaded with sweat. She thanked him as he carried the grocery sacks into the kitchen. Whew! she breathed, letting her purse and handbag drop to the floor. She kicked her shoes off to complete the pile. Were you wondering why I didn't call from the market? Sorry, no, I just woke up, he said, hurrying back to lock the door. I guess I fell asleep. I mean, I know I did. I, I just didn't mean to.